Well, we have a crisis in teaching math and science in our schools. Just ask the U.S. Secretary of Education. That there is a school system that's going to start um, making sure that first graders or even pre-Ks have A1 teaching. Yeah, to which the steak sauce people replied, you heard her, every school should have access to A1. Wasn't all that long ago that it's, we're going to have internet in our schools. Woo. Now, okay, let's do see A1 and how, and how can that be helpful? Because it, it's tangy, but with a hint of raisin. And to that end, students can learn a lot about A1's flavor profile and perhaps develop new ways to flavor our steaks or meat in general, or go on AI and learn that you got mixed up, confusing A1 with AI, artificial intelligence. Now, back to America's crisis in science, math, and statistics. Every single job was taken, about 107% was taken by illegal immigrants. Now, to put that in perspective, that's all of them plus another 7%. But back to America's crisis in math. It kind of all became clear. Bloomberg spent 500 million on ads. U.S. population, 327 million. Uh, don't tell us if you're ahead of us on the math. He could have given each American one million dollars and have had lunch money left over. It's an incredible way of putting it. It is incredible. And it started long before the push for A1. You're going to get in your bank account today, you're going to get a payment of one six, uh, uh, 12 months divided. Over a billion, 300 million, trillion, 300 million dollars. Yeah. Let's go back to the Trump administration. Since you have been in office, President Trump, your DOJ agencies have seized more than 22 million fentanyl pills, 3,400 kilos of fentanyl since you've been your last 100 days, which saved, are you ready for this media, 258 million lives. That would be around 74% of the entire U.S. population, nearly three out of four Americans who would otherwise be dead in the course of 100 days. But back to America's long running problem with math. There's an estimation of somewhere between 700 billion and a trillion, 300 million billion dollars. Let's just say that's a fairly wide range and that a trillion, 300 million billion is a lot. Now, let's move on to Florida and get serious now. Here's FSU physics professor Dr. Paul Cottle. Not only are we not improving, in math and science at the high school level, we're actually getting worse at a, at a pretty substantial rate of speed. Among other red flags, the Florida Chamber Foundation just found a significant gap between skills taught in school and skills required by employers. By its criteria, 65% of Florida's eighth graders are proficient in math. And you might say, well, only 65%. But of course, it depends on how you define proficient. The National Assessment of Educational Progress used different benchmarks, and in 2024, it found only 21% of Florida's eighth graders were proficient or better in math. The states that perform better than Florida are the ones in blue. When you meet with middle and high school teachers today, what are they telling you? They're telling me the math the math skill level of their students has dropped substantially. Now, Florida actually does well in student achievement in elementary school, but unfortunately, a soft spot begins to set in during middle school and it carries through into high school. That the math skills at the eighth grade level have declined significantly from where they were in fourth grade. And then the SATs tell us that nothing has improved in high school. And in recent years, we can also see the regression in high school physics. So the American Institute of Physics Statistical Research Center every several years conducts a survey of high school teachers to find out how many students are taking high school physics, what, what the teachers are doing, what they're teaching in their classrooms. And what she found on the last survey, which was in 2019, was that Florida seemed to be declining at a rate greater than any other state in the union. She figured it had to be wrong. So she contacted me and I was able to access statistics that the Florida Department of Education provides very graciously and send them to her. And she was able to confirm 
that their initial conclusions were correct. Florida's high school physics is in decline faster than any other place in the nation. It's just a, it's sort of a canary in the coal mine for STEM, STEM career paths in the state of Florida. We're, we're in trouble. What's causing this? I think it's a lack of interest. The state has never had a science and math culture. And you think, oh, how's that possible? You know, Kennedy Space Center's here. We have a high-tech industry in Central Florida. So a lot of good things are happening. But we, the schools have not had the opportunity to pick up on that. In 2023, Florida's mean SAT score of 966 ranked near the bottom of the nation, 46th among the 50 states. And then in 2024, we dropped from a mean score of 966 to 948. And this is the predominant math, reading, and writing test that Florida students take to earn bright future scholarships and admission to the colleges they want to attend. And this is a long-running problem. Through the past 50 years, SAT scores peaked in 2005 under Governor Jeb Bush, and they have been dropping ever since. This really is important that kids, uh, you know, learn how to read and learn how to calculate math in a way that allows them to live a life of purpose and meaning. And right now, that is at risk. Now, Florida does have a higher percentage of students taking the SAT than most states. Around 90% take it here in Florida, so it's not fair to compare Florida to all the higher ranking states. But in math, among the dozen systems that have at least 90% taking it, Florida still ranks behind all of them except New Mexico. To put it another way, we're going to need a lot of A1. It's time for our state to institute a crash program on improving math and science learning for all of our students. In related news, the Florida legislature did not do that in this year's session, and it could reduce financial incentives for Florida high schools to offer AP or college level classes. They're going to have to just throw out all their old assumptions about where you get teachers, how you recruit teachers, how you teach, te how you treat teachers when they're in the classroom. Just throw that all out. Talk to teachers, find out what would work better and just go for it. Well, you'll find more of our conversation with Dr. Cottle on fox13news.com, and we'll continue to dig into the problem and possible solutions in the coming rounds of money, power, and politics.